All right. Hey guys, Brian here with Aridani again. Today we're going to talk a little bit about painting latex. This is latex, not plastic. Um, the biggest barrier to painting latex is this, that it's flexible. Um, so you have to figure out how to bypass that part of it in order to get your paint to stick. Paint will normally stick to it, but it's just a matter of how long and if it'll stick if it gets wet and if you can peel it back off or not. Um, so one thing I've come across that I use is this uh, by Createx Colors. It's flexible adhesion promoter. It's part of Tim Gore's Bloodline series for their colors. Uh, Tim Gore is a special effects makeup artist, painter, sculptor. He does a little bit of everything, but he is very well known for uh, painting a lot of prosthetics and masks and things for the movie industry. So he has very good uh, knowledge base on how to make this stuff work. Um, so I got these paints quite a while ago. Uh, admittedly, I am not a great painter. I'm not a, I don't paint a lot. I have watched lots and lots of videos of people painting. So I feel like I have a general knowledge of how to do it. Um, it's just not something I do a lot of. I love the sculpting and the molding and the casting part. I like how they look when they're painted, but I don't necessarily love painting them. Um, so a couple of things about painting. There's different things you can use, of course, brushes, always brushes. You can use an airbrush. I've got one of these pistol grip airbrushes. I enjoy using that more than a regular grip airbrush just because I feel like I have more control. Um, it is. So I used to build large scale playgrounds and we used big versions of this. So it's just a action I'm used to using. So it was nice to get that in a smaller form factor. Um, you can use lots of different types of sponges, all different kinds of brushes, cheap brushes, these little acetone brushes you get from Home Depot, chip brushes, again, Home Depot, super inexpensive, <coughs> sea sponge, stipple sponge, anything you can use that will take paint and then lend itself to a texture, especially for monsters and stuff, works really well. Um, so you have things like I did a video a couple of weeks ago painting this orc prosthetic. This was all done with brushes. There was no uh, airbrush used for that at all. Uh, when you have really small texture, uh, you're able to get away with more with a brush. Um, I used a lot of like flicking of colors on there. Uh, one thing you always want to remember when you're painting something, if you want it to look like skin, is that skin is layers. So it's not just one flat balloon enveloping your guts. You actually, there are layers to the skin. So when you're painting, you want to try to emulate painting layers. So you, you layer on colors with other colors transparent over the top of them. You can do that with airbrush by mixing with a transparent base um, with water. Uh, you can, when you're dry brushing, dilute your color with a little bit of water and then knock most of the paint off and then dry brush where you're just hitting the tops. Um, I don't have the best camera in the world, but you can kind of see there's just all kinds of colors in there. And up close, it, you can see splotches of blue and splotches of red and splotches of yellow. Um, but at a distance, if you had this on your face, um, you wouldn't really notice that. And the good thing about monsters too is you can do whatever skin tone you want because it's your monster. And so for things like that, that have a lot of texture, that for me was relatively easy. So I painted a pair of ears to go with it, uh, which was harder than painting this because our ears don't have much texture on them. Like these troll ears that uh, we have are awesome. I love how gnarly they look, but they don't have this little fine texture. Um, so I actually had to go back with an airbrush with this and just kind of let it splatter and things like that um, in order to get a little bit of a texture in order to get a nice layered look like what I have there, um, but on the ears, which are, are relatively smooth. And then the fun stuff you can do with an airbrush is you can go back and like highlight things um, just with the spray, which you can do with a brush too, but it's a little bit more uh, 
homogenous, doesn't look like an exact line. I mean, you can see it, it's very subtle, and that's the kind of stuff you can do with an airbrush. Um, but there's a lot of subtlety there because of the uh, texture that you can do with a brush. So you definitely don't have to have an airbrush to, to do this. Um, sometimes with a brush, it just takes a little bit more time and finesse. And again, so I, I had two of these guys. Um, and this guy does have good texture, but it's kind of broad texture. So I ended up coming back with the airbrush on him. And he's a little bit more subtle than I wanted him to be. But, um, you know, you can kind of see there's some yellow in there. There's some pinks and blues and purples um, around just to kind of delineate. Did a little bit darker in some of the spots that would have shadow. With a mask, you're kind of pushing the lights and the dark areas. Uh, you will get a little bit of that from natural light, but especially if you were going to wear a mask at Halloween, you want to push those lights and darks. So, say for something like this, which is a mask that I did not sculpt and I did not paint. I bought this, but it's by a sculptor I really like. You can see that they have really accentuated and pushed a lot of that. So, really high pinks there, really dark darks in the in the wrinkles and stuff just to highlight so if you were out on halloween like people would see you coming and they would know that that was a monster face and not your face so you can really have a lot of fun and really kind of i mean this is i even though this is not very realistic it is a well-painted mask I, I like that um, but you can get even more garish than that if you wanted to this not only works on latex but you can also use some of these techniques on so this is res a resin mask so this is rotocast um and there's a lot of really subtle stuff in here with yellows and blues and reds and then i've gone back and highlighted what i thought would be the the fleshy bits and again teeth are not done eyes are not done i've had this forever and just never finished it but with the airbrush you can get some really subtle and then there's also some just splattering effect going on there uh and basically what you want more than anything is layers. So one, you don't want to be too precious about it because you're going to continue to put layers over it. If you get a big splotch, a lot of times you can wipe it off or you can leave it and just cover it with the next layer. And if you just do subtle layering, you end up with something that looks pretty lifelike. And of course, this is a monster. So this is, you know, who knows what this guy really looks like. This was just what I wanted him to look like. So, this mask has already been coated with this adhesion promoter, and basically it just, just gives you a tacky surface. So, this is the promoters bonding to the latex, and then this tacky surface will bond to your paint, and then it should be stuck on there. It's like a primer. Um, it's flexible so that you got a little bit of flex once you put your paint on there, and it doesn't just... A lot of times, if you painted straight paint on straight latex, it'll just crack because latex is so bendy. You can use high latex paint. Um, you can get some adhesion from them onto latex, uh, but a lot of times it'll crack and peel off after time, especially, and especially if you flex it a lot, it would just pop right back off. So um, the adhesion promoter does, does a really good job of, you can work, work the latex, move it around, and, it, and it's on there, so it's not, you know, you're not going to move here as much except for like in this area and stuff. And that's, if you were to pull that really hard, you could probably still crack it over time. But if I did that and didn't have that promoter on there, that would just get a crack right through it. So uh, the promoter really, really helped. That was a, a great product from Createx there and Tim Gore. Um, if you guys have any questions as we go, be sure to put it in the chat. I think I've got it where I can actually see the chat this time. My other one the other day, I couldn't see it, but I think I can see it today. <laughs> so we shall see. Um, so the other thing when painting, especially a monster mask, is you don't have to be super precious about it. Like I'm definitely very like broad strokes. You know, you can always repaint it. You can always put more paint on it. You don't have to be super 
tight with it I mean, unless unless you want to be but i'm just not a super tight painter anyway so i kind of go with the happy mistakes and stick with them so a couple things you could do here you could start if you like this base as your color you can start with this or you can cover the whole thing with a base color you can go a lighter color you can go a darker color but normally what i would do Of course, I put gloves out and then didn't put them on, but that's okay because I don't usually paint with gloves. So that's kind of a super light flesh color, which doesn't, you know, even if you start with something like that, like you can end up with something like that. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a light skin toned troll. So. And I usually start where somewhere it doesn't really matter, like in the back. And you can just start dry brushing. And immediately you'll see what that dry brush is. It starts pulling out some of that texture. If you have a little water handy and you have a spot that you think is too, you just wipe it right back off. This is all water-based paint, so it's pretty easy to fix if you feel like you've made a mistake but again especially these early layers like you do not have to be very precious with this at all and in fact for a monster the less precious you are about it probably the better And even though this is a fairly light color, because I'm dry brushing it over this darker color, he's staying a fairly dark tone. But again, like right there, I feel like I got it too light. I just wipe it back off. Amazing. What a little dry brushing. Like it just starts, you see some texture, it starts coming to life already. And you want to go in light layers on this anyway, because the thicker you go, especially if you didn't have this adhesion promoter, the more likely it is that it's just going to wipe. Like, if you did a big, thick glob of latex on here, paint, you could probably just peel it right back off. So, light, easy layers. And then because it is water-based paint, between layers, you want to let it dry. And you want to let it set up a little bit, which we won't have a lot of time to do with this just because we're kind of just doing it as fast as we can. But I have tiny hair dryers, a little travel hair dryer. I got it at uh, the Goodwill. I mean, you can get a hair dryer for nothing at the Goodwill. Use that. Dry between your layers. Um, a lot of times what I will do, especially if I'm using the airbrush, is take the transparent airbrush medium, or airbrush base, excuse me, and just spray the whole thing, cover it with a transparent base, kind of seals that layer in so that if your next paint layer, we're going to try to pull off this paint layer, it would have to go through the transparent base first and probably wouldn't get through the transparent base to be able to you know, see. But again, if you, if, you, if you hit it too hard, just wipe it back off. And so as something as simple as just dry brushing that lighter tone over this darker based mask, already gives us what could for all for a lot of intents and purposes be a wearable mask like you could you could go out you see the texture people would know you're a monster and you might not have to do more than just that i'm going back in here and i'm going to hit some of the eye spots that might have a little bit more highlight to them. I'm gonna go ahead and start accentuating some of those. 
keeps wanting to fall off the stand. And, you know, if you're dressing like a monster, you're wanting to be probably a little more dramatic than subtle. So a lot of this you can really push, pop it out. And I'm not worried at all if it's slinging color anywhere. And a lot of masks you get at a Halloween store, this is about all they do to them. Is they cast them in a colored latex, come back, dry brush them really fast, maybe do a little bit of airbrush accentuations on them, seal them, stick them in a bin and fill them to people. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of really good latex masks that look like that are painted that way. So very quickly, you can come up with something that is pretty cool looking. I don't really have a plan for what I want this guy to look like. I'm just kind of winging it as we go. Because I'm not a good enough painter to plan something like that. But very quickly, you can start bringing out. And if you wanted to like say this was the only level you're doing you could come back with a smaller brush and hit some of these smaller wrinkles that are kind of hard to hit with the with the big brush and really make them pop out maybe not that much but So that would be a good based out area. And then what I would normally do is try to get as dry as I could with that, but I'm not going to subject you guys to a hair dryer for 30 seconds or a minute. Um, so if you wanted to start getting layers, so you've got, so you have your base layer, you have a dark, then you have another layer on top of that that's a fairly transparent, lighter color, but pops some of the highlights and things like that. One thing that you have in the layers of your skin is you have vascularity. So you have veins and you have arteries and you have capillaries. So you have all that stuff that's going through these layers of your skin. Um, and you and you see that. Like if you look at your hand, it's not just like my hand is not just pink. It's pink and yellow and blue and red, you know, and purple and all different colors in there. So now what you can do is just start layering those colors on. And the way that I like to do it with a brush, with an airbrush, you can mix it with water, you can mix it with more transparent base and just kind of do washes or even turn the airbrush pressure way down so that you get speckled. Um, or you can get a really cheap brush, cut it off really short so it's stiff. This is where you start to get to have some fun with it. Got a little red there. I'm gonna, and basically you just flink it on there. Technical term, flink. And then you want to think about like areas of the face that have a little bit more vascularity around your eyes, around your nostrils, around your lips. You can do a little more flinkage in those areas. But really and truly, if you just do it all over, it's really subtle. 
And if you get one on there, so if you got a really big one, again, just pop it off there. Sometimes you'll get a blob, a big blob. You, sometimes you just touch it with your finger and you can knock it right back off. But this is the kind of stuff that's really going to start giving you layers and a little bit more realism. I'm sure it's it's very subtle. You may or may not even be able to see what it's doing on the video, but it over time doing this with several different colors really adds a lot. You can wear gloves or not. And this is this, this kind of stuff that you want to let, like say you did this and you decided you wanted to dry brush over it again. You want to really let this red dry on here before you go brushing another color over it because it'll either muddy it up or could even just knock some of the red back off. So you want to let that red, because it's just little splotches of paint sitting on top of the the first color there. And because we just did a dry brush on the first layer, all these deep lines are still showing as the original color. If this were a flesh colored latex mask, like what most of ours come this color, you could base it out in a dark color first and then do the dry brush. Um, or another way you can do it is do a wash, a really wet, darker color, and just kind of let it, I don't know if that shows up, but that the flinkage right there was a little heavy. So I'm just going to dab on that. Um, but you can do a wash and even, so you could, paint the whole thing in a really watery dark and then just barely touch almost a reverse dry brush where you're just barely wiping off the, all these tops and leaving that paint in the dark in the lower areas. So it was a little heavy there, but I don't mind it. It'll look good over time. And I can, I can make it. This is a good way. If you have a, something that you want to have freckles or something like that, you can do it this way too. Try to give him a good amount of little redness in his nostrils there. Around his eyes. Make all that area kind of stand out. And then, of course, mouth area. Got a little bit more vascularity in that area. So it comes across, it's real subtle. Um, but once we do a couple other colors, it'll start all kind of coming together. And if you're like me too, like I have freckles. So like I probably tend to use the flinkage method a lot just because it's what I'm used to looking at on my own self, which is lots of random colors of skin on my skin. So there will be a red level. Again, hit it with this. Try to dry it off. I do have a little fan kind of off the side here blowing, so hopefully it'll kind of start drying some of that in there. Any chat? 
I think I have it correct this time. So hopefully I'm not missing any questions. There we are there. So then the other color you have in your skin is you have veins and arteries is blue. And really the funny, the crazy thing is, so like a, a light skin tone like that, that you can bake a lot of things out. It's been a while since I've done it, but you can actually take red, yellow, and blue and white. And if you mix all of them together, you get a color very similar to that, which is kind of like alchemy to me that that happens. Oh, that's always fun. Let's figure out a way to work with that. It's part of the process. Mirror it down. Wipe some of that other paint off. Start over. And again, if you seal it between layers, a lot of times you'd be able to wipe that blue off without wiping off too much of the other colors, but not able to do that between layers in this time frame. So but work with it as we can. And maybe in the end, it'll look better for that. Gives you a little blue shadow there, which is probably something we would do later. Anyway. Then we can go back and redo some of our red. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm knock it back off. I might even do. A little more of that lighter color. Do a little flinkage with that. And that looks a little drastic right now, but we'll make it work. So the next color I was going to do is blue. As you could tell from the huge splotch. And again, I'm not too... Did a quick wash with water there. Not super worried about the colors blending too much. Let's start this one back here and see what happens. Okay. Let's start doing this one good. Just kind of touching where I see some kind of drastic drips there. Doing this has already given us some good different levels. You got the dark and the cracks, and then you got some highlights where we dry brushed it, and then you got a little red, which kind of makes a highlight as well. And then the blue comes in here and starts giving us some more depth.
because you know you're going to have some shadow in the eye. You can really start forcing it. And we're making a mask, so we want some drama. So we can really do a little bit of extra flinkage like we did the red in the eye. We can do the blue, and that starts giving us a little bit of a shadow in that area for drama. So another good thing to do this with would be a toothbrush. Toothbrushes work really well as long as you're done brushing your teeth with it. Another shadow area would be like in here. And what this does is you get, it starts giving you differentiation in light and shadow, but it's not like brush strokes. You're not drastically painting and then having to blend it here and here. You can just come in here and just do more of this in this area. And just over time, it's going to build up and darken that area for you very inconsistently which is what you want in order for it to look real so we're starting to get some some layers in there and I kind of it's hard for me to tell on the video but it looks like in the sheen you can kind of see some of the gives it kind of a pinky and kind of a bluey you can come in what I would come in with next so if you have these paints or want these paints I bought a kit but so far I've used illustration dermatitis tan illustration blood red and illustration code blue so those, those three colors is all it's got on it so far. Next, I'm going to use Injury Ochre. Ooh, almost blurred. And I'm just going to continue to click on color. It's going to start, it'll look a little Jackson pollock -y for a second once you get all these colors on there, but then we'll meld them back together with another dry brush. And with this yellow, like if you wanted to hit some of these areas that are highlighted, you can pop them a little bit. Make him look kind of gross around his nose with a little extra yellow. like I said, normally between some of these layers, I would be using the hair dryer to make sure they were good and dry. And even sealing them maybe with a clear base. Get these highlight areas with a little extra yellow and I'll make them pop a little more. Yeah, well. 
So all we're doing here is we're just building lights and darks. And up close, it looks like you can see those splotches, but from far away, and hopefully on the camera, it just looks like lights and darks. So what we can do next is let that sit and let the fan blow on it for just a second. Try to get some of that to dry up a little bit. As you can kind of tell, messy is kind of the name of the game. So you end up, if you don't wear gloves. And now what I'm going to try to do, if it won't meld all that together, is just kind of do another little light dry brush over the top here. Try not to... You would want to make sure that blue and yellow and red are really dry before you did this, but being super, super light here. And this color is a very light color, but because we're layering over those other colors, it comes out more like a gray than it does a super light skin tone. And even though I'm painting over it, I can you can still see a lot of the flinkage in there. Get a little bit more paint out here. In these areas like this where your bone is closer to your skin can be way lighter not only just because it's a highlight area but because your skin is thinner where your bones are Again, don't be too precious about it. We can come in later with a with a wash of darker and bring some of that back out to you. And again, you can, I can still see little dots of red and blue, but I don't mind that because that's just different layers that helps to add depth to the, to the mask overall. So I'm going to come back and try to add some more. I'm going to 
kind of botched it in there. I'm going to try to add some more layers back. While I'm doing that, I'm going to come back into the nose area and give him a little bit more. You can see just over layering that I don't have to paint black back in there because it's just all kind of melding into a, a darker. And that's one thing. I don't paint. I don't use black for anything for any of this. Blues, purple, about the darkest color for shadows and stuff. Um, you don't really have true black. I mean, a, a, a shadow is not true black, so it's just a darker tone of your skin tone, so. That kind of breaks up that area where I dry brushed a little too hard. And again, yellow does a pretty good job of making like nostrils look gnarly. Or nostrils or like areas along a cut. I always like to do a little, there's just a hint of yellow in there. Just makes it look a little bit gruesomer, maybe a little infected. So next up, I'm going to uh, use a little vascular violet. And all these are just. Really water that down. I'm gonna knock most of it back off. And then really just kind of a, a dry brush in these deeper areas with a really thin wash of purple just to pop them out. Go down in that nose. You want it to be a little darker in the nostril there. You can kind of bring the shadow around a little bit. And just super watered down. Light touch. And shadowy areas. And you can. And if you were able to be sure everything was dry. And maybe even seal. Like there it blended with the other colors just a little bit. Um, it wouldn't do that quite so much. Especially if you seal between layers. Break some of that up with touches. So this is where you can start making it a little bit more dramatic, forcing some of these areas to be shadow. And you could do this with, with the flinkage method too if you wanted to. With this purple you can
start accentuating some of those with a with a spiky brush like this. You can even it's kind of like you would make up, just tap it in there. So if I were able to dry this at this point and seal it, I might actually go back and do like a wash of, of a brown or some other dark color just to bring some of these really deeper areas back out. But I won't ruin what I got. So if I did that right now, it would just because most of this is still moist, wet. And most, most of this is also not sealed in there. It would just mostly turn it to mud. So I just put just a tiny bit of red on my brush. I don't really want him to have a red lip, but I'm going to bring in a little bit of red just to differentiate a little bit. That airbrush, that's super easy to do. Just really light red right there. Good to go. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Get some watered down red. Just kind of give him a little tint to his nostril here. most of it back out but that little bit of red and then if you used uh, like a gloss varnish or something to seal this mask well you you really want to use not a gloss for the whole thing but for areas like around the no nose and stuff you can make this look like he's you got a really moist nasal area by using a gloss varnish in this area versus matte or satin. I mean, you have a little bit of sheen to your skin anyway, but not quite a gloss. Same thing with the lip. Give it a little bit of a gloss. Make the nostrils hook out a little bit there. Look a little different, a little more raw. A little purple. Let that dry and do that. Do a little dry brush of the other color back over it again. But again, it's just all about layers, layers and layers and layers. Like with a mask like this with good texture, you can start with a really dark base and just do a dry brush over it and you can get something that's very dramatic anyway. But then going back in with all these other little effects and stuff, you can really start making it look more lifelike. And then areas like that when you actually cut the eyes out and stuff and put your own eyes behind it they it looks really cool cut this whole area out here leave that top lip cut this bottom lip area out like we normally do so your bottom lip is there um it's a really cool effect Like I said, when this is all done, I would also seal this 
um, with a varnish or a matte medium or, or transparent clear. Just to keep it nice and on there. One thing you always remember too is that paint does what they call dry down. So even if you feel like it looks a little drastic when you first put it on, it's when it dries, it's going to dry darker than it actually looks to your eye when it first goes on wet. So you might think you're being super dramatic with a really light color. And then when it dries, you have in fact not been very dramatic at all. And you can come back and do another layer, which just, again, it's just adding layers. You may also feel like you can see all your brush strokes when you're dry brushing or something like that. But again, up close you might, and at, at the level of where you're painting, you might. But at a distance, on Halloween, at a convention, more than likely, nobody's going to see it. Coming back and accentuating some areas. We just have a few minutes left here. And you get to watch us paint something else today. Which is our mask armor. Which be fun. Can't wait to see what Mike and Paul do with theirs. They're definitely much better painters than I am. Trying to pop out some areas. And again, there's some lighter splotches and darker splotches, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And where I came up with the purple, now I'm going down with the dry brush of the light. That kind of melds those two together. So, I haven't seen any questions in the chat. I haven't seen anything in the chat. So, I hope I'm not missing the chat somehow like I did the other day. Please know that I'm not ignoring the chat. I just don't see anything in the chat. So, If you have any questions, now would be the time for them. Because here in a minute, we're going to switch off and do another painting panel. That area is going to get a pretty harsh shadow most of the time anyway, so I'm going to put a little bit more light in there where I did that purple just because it's going to get a natural lighting shadow most of the time anyway. Let's 
some of that back together. Again, all of this is real subtle stuff. And you can definitely, if you wanted to be dramatic, you could come in and just flat paint all this and flat paint all the shadows and a really nice dramatic mask as well as far as colors go. You could have fun. You could do florets. If you knew you were going to be somewhere where they had black lights and stuff, you could do fluorescence and all that jazz, it looked pretty cool. So in my lighting, in person, that's all fairly subtle. I mean, I know this really stands out. But again, if this were Halloween or if you were at a con and had your eyes there and your mouth there, it's going to look pretty cool. This mask just has awesome texture on it, so it paints with a dry brush just like so easy. I like this one even more than the one I did with the airbrush. Definitely more than the one I did with the airbrush. I'd have to go back and repaint some of that one that I did with the airbrush. Another thing, if you feel like you have too many brush strokes, just kind of scrumble it around. Try to change the angle of your brush. Push it. So guys, that for me looks pretty good. I might do a couple other things to finish it up. Definitely would clear it um, with a with a matte medium. All I have right here is like a medium gloss, um, which is what I did the other one with, which is for me a little, is a little too glossy. Um, but you can, like I said, like in nasal areas and stuff like that, it looks pretty cool around the eyes and stuff where you would have a little bit of normal wetness. But thanks for joining. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Discord. Um, happy to answer any questions you guys have about anything. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'm just getting messy with paint. <laughs> and, you know, when you're not super particular about it, it is a lot more fun. So I enjoyed this. Thanks, guys. See you next time.